If everything was perfect, you would never learn and you would never grow. Hi everyone, let's go through a few questions from application of derivatives. So we'll go through two markers and then we will go through three markers and four markers. You may want to solve these two marker problems before getting into three markers and four markers. This is a list of different type of problems that you may want to practice. You can refer application of derivatives playlist for all the basics and more details. Let's look at uh, each of the questions here. If the cost function of the firm is given by, this is the cost function, find the average cost and marginal cost. Now, we'll have to remember the formulas here for sure. right? Without formulas, we'll not be able to solve uh, these uh, problems. Average cost is total cost by quantity. Total cost is nothing but the cost function. right? Total cost is nothing but the cost function. Put the cost function here. Quantity is always x. right? Quantity is always x or they would have given in the question. The number of units or number of products becomes the quantity. So here x is the quantity. So this is the average cost. Marginal cost is, remember always, whenever there is marginal word, it means you have to find the derivative. Whenever there is marginal, you have to find the derivative. Marginal cost, find the derivative of cost. Right, that is der derivative of the cost function. That's all. Now here, uh, they have given you displacement uh, expression. S is equal to 5t square plus 4t minus 8. Find initial velocity and acceleration. So whenever you have initial velocity, right, it means time is equal to 0. Time is equal to 0. T is equal to 0. Always. Initial velocity, T is equal to 0. Acceleration. Now what is the formula for velocity? Velocity is displacement by time. That, that is rate of change of displacement with respect to time. Ds by dt. So S is given. Find the derivative. Initial velocity means t is equal to 0. Substitute t as 0. Right? So, you will get 4. So, velocity is 4 units. Acceleration. What is the formula of acceleration? Double derivative. Second order derivative of displacement with respect to time. So, double derivative of displacement. Right? d square s by dt square is acceleration. So, find the derivative of this again. That is, you find the derivative of 10 t plus 4. And you will get 10. So, 10 units is the answer for acceleration. Third one. A stone thrown vertically upward rises s feet in t seconds where s is where displacement is given. What is the velocity after 2 seconds? Find the acceleration. See, this is exactly similar to the other problem. There it was initial velocity. Right? Here it is velocity when t is equal to 2 seconds. Initial velocity, velocity is 0. Here they have asked to find velocity when it is 2 seconds. Right? When t is equal to 2 seconds, you have to find the velocity. So, same case, velocity is nothing but differentiate uh, uh, displacement with respect to time. That will give you velocity. Now, substitute t as 2 seconds because you have to find velocity when t is equal to 2 seconds. So, substitute t as 2, you will get 16 units. Acceleration, again, it is a double derivative. That is d square s by dt. Right? And put t as 2 seconds, so you will get minus 32 units. Now, here again, same similar problem, but here t is equal to 3, velocity is 0, and acceleration is 14 units. So, first, uh, we will have to find velocity. What is velocity? ds by dt. They have told velocity is 0. So, put uh, v as 0. You will you will have to find a and b here. Right? You will have to find a and b. So, when I put velocity is 0 in this expression, I will get 3a3 square plus b is equal to 0. Now, similarly, I will find acceleration. Acceleration is d square s by dt square. I will put all of this. Right? Now, t is 3 seconds here. Right? They have given t. So, substitute t here. t is 3 seconds in this expression. A you, a you don't know. We will have to find out a. Right? So, acceleration they have given, which is 14 units. Substitute acceleration. We don't know a. We know t. So, you will get value of a. Now, you put this a in this particular expression and you will get b. So, we have got value of a and b both. Here, if the total cost of production is given by this particular cost function, find average cost and marginal cost. Simple. Average cost is total cost by quantity. Cost function is given. This itself is a total cost. 
substitute that quantity is always x this is average cost now you have to find the average cost when output is 10 units what is output output is x quantity output all these mean the same output quantity x all these means the same so when x is equal to 10 units you have to find this average cost put x as 10 you will get the value marginal cost like i said what is marginal you have to find the derivative of cost marginal cost so differentiate total cost that is the cost function given here you will get the derivative substitute x as 10 x as 10 you will get marginal cost here the radius of sphere is increasing at the rate of 0 0.5 meters per second find the rate of increase of its volume when r is equal to 1.5 meters now first you need to know you need to find the volume of the sphere what is the formula of volume of sphere it's 4 by 3 pi r cube this is the volume you have to remember this formula volume of sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube what is it they've given they've given that radius of sphere is increasing at the rate increasing at the rate that means they have given dr by dt radius is increasing at the rate of 0 0.5 meters per second so there is time here so it's dr by dt dr by dt is 0 0.5 meters per second you will have to find the rate of increase of its volume rate of increase rate of increase means dv by dt volume right this is volume you have to find rate of increase with respect to time always assume it's time right so dv by dt r is equal to 1.5 meters they have given here take the formula of volume differentiate this remember one thing since you are differentiating with respect to t right when i find the derivative of r square it will be 2r and i have to put dr by dt let's not forget this i have to put dr by dt right so now instead of dr by dt i'll put 0 0.5 i'll substitute 0 0.5 here and r is already given and substitute r also here then i'll get dv by dt the next problem when brakes are applied to a moving car the car travels at a distance of s feet in t seconds the displacement is given here when does the car stop you need to find at, at what time the car, car stops so car stops when the velocity is zero of course right if the car is not moving only then the car stops that's what it means if it's not moving it means velocity is zero because velocity is displacement with respect to time what is displacement displacement is change of position change of position with respect to time is velocity now car stops that means there is no change in position it stops there is no movement so displacement is zero so that therefore velocity becomes zero velocity is ds by dt you have the displacement function put it here find the derivative velocity is zero so equate velocity to zero 20 minus 80 t is zero therefore t is equal to one fourth second so car stops when t is equal to one by four seconds next problem very important one if the sum of two numbers is 48 find the numbers whose product is maximum when you add two numbers it's 48 and when i multiply these two numbers it's going to be maximum now the moment the moment i know it's maximum it's double differentiate it's double differentiation whenever there is maximum it is double differentiation okay so now first let me find the numbers let's assume the numbers to be x and y x and y when i add x plus y it's, it's going to be 48 that's what they have told sum of two numbers is 48 now i can also say y is equal to 48 minus x so basically one number is x the other number is 48 minus x if i take first number the second number obviously is going to be 48 minus x so i have taken the two numbers here product of two numbers is maximum means its double derivative of this product is less than zero x into 48 minus x when i multiply the double derivative is going to be less than zero so first what i'll do i'll take the single derivative let's assume that product is p right p is equal to x into 48 minus x so i differentiate dp by dx when i differentiate it's going to become dp by dx and uh, i'll find the derivative right it will be 48 minus 2x 
now I'll have to equate it to 0. I'll have to equate this to 0. Right? You'll always have to equate the derivative to 0. That way I'll get the value of x. So what is x? My first number. Right? x is my first number. So I got my first number. What is second number? Obviously it's going to be 48 minus 24 which is 24 again. So the two numbers are 24 and 24. Now I have to verify that the product is maximum. We'll have to put this step. Right? How do I verify if the product is maximum? I'll have to find the double derivative and see if it is less than 0. So I found the single derivative here. Now I'll find d square p by dx square. I'll find double derivative. What is deri double derivative of this? It's minus 2. Right? So minus 2 is less than 0. It's negative. Therefore, we say product is maximum. Yet another problem. The radius of a circular plate is increasing at the rate of 2 by 3 pi centimeter per second. Remember per second. That means it is with respect to time. That means it is with respect to time. Radius. Radius is r. Let us assume radius is r. So dr by dt. dr by dt is 2 by 3 pi centimeter per second. Find the rate of change of its area. You have to find the rate of change of its area. That is dA by dt. If you assume that area is a. Let us assume area is a. So, you will have to find dA by dt. They have given dr by dt. We have to find dA by dt. And they have given radius as 6 cm. So, what we will do? We will have to take the area formula. Because we have to find dA by dt. Which means I need to get the area formula. Area is pi r square. Area of a circle is pi r square. So, if I differentiate, I will get dA by dt. Right? And then derivative of this is pi into 2r. Remember, dr by dt. You are differentiating r with respect to t. r with respect to t. So, dr by dt. dr by dt is 2 by 3. Substitute. r also you have to substitute. r is 6 cm. So, you will finally get, when I substitute r is 6, I will get this 8 cm square per second. This is another problem related to revenue. Total revenue, total cost function, of company is given. This is the revenue function. This is the cost function. Find the output at which MR is equal to MC. MR is marginal revenue. MC is marginal cost. You have to find the output. Output, I, like I said, what is output? Number of units. They have already told. Q is equal to number of units. Output means number of units. Q. You have to find Q here. Right? You have to find the value of Q. So, what is marginal revenue? What is marginal? Marginal means you have to differentiate. What you have to differentiate? Revenue. Marginal revenue. So you have to differentiate revenue. What is revenue function here? It's already given here. Right? Find the derivative. Then you have to find marginal cost. What is the cost function here? 20 plus 4q. So find the derivative of cost function. Now, you will have to find the output when MR is equal to MC. So equate this. MR is equal to MC. They have already given here. Put marginal revenue expression. Right? And uh, marginal cost expression equate it, you will get value of Q 148 units. Now, next problem show that this particular expression has neither maximum nor minimum. Neither maximum nor minimum means double derivative should be zero. That's when you say the function is neither maximum nor minimum. So, you take this function, differentiate it twice, right? Once you differentiate it twice, you will get that it's equal to zero. Therefore, the function is neither. Maximum nor minimum. Now, let's look at 3 marker and 4 marker problems. You will see a overlap between 3 marker and 4 markers. It is important to solve 2 marker problems so that 3 marker and 4 marker becomes easier. These are the list of questions here. From application of derivatives. Let's go through the solutions uh, step by step. The volume of a spherical ball is increasing at the rate of 4 pi cc. Find the rate of increase of radius when the volume is 288 pi cc. See, the moment I know its rate of increase, rate of increase, it is nothing but I have to find the derivative. I have to differentiate. Right? Now, volume of a spherical ball is increasing at the rate. That means you take volume as V. It is increasing at the rate of 4 pi cc. That means dV by dt. Rate means it's differentiating. It's differentiation. Rate means differentiation. Increasing also means differentiation. 
So dv by dt is they have given as 4 pi cc. You have to find the rate of increase of radius. You assume that this is radius. Let r be radius. So you have to find dr by dt. You have to find rate of increase. Rate of increases, you have to find derivative. So dr by dt. With respect to time, why, why do you say it's time? Because there is second. They have given here in the question seconds. Seconds. So this is a clue that it is with respect to time. So dr by dt you have to find. Right? You should understand the formulas to solve application of derivatives. Right? Volume of spherical ball is given. What is volume of sphere? 4 by 3 pi r cube. You differentiate this. Right? And remember one thing. When you are differentiating here, you have to put dr by dt. Right? You are differentiating r with respect to t. So, it is dr by dt. dr by dt is what we have to find out. dv by dt is given. 4 pi cc. Substitute and you will get dr by dt. Simple problem. Right? You will get dr by dt which is 1 by r square. Now, I don't know what r is, right? So, one more thing given in the question. Volume is given. Volume is given. 288 pi. So, what I will do? I will substitute 288 pi here in the volume. So, if I substitute this in the volume, I will get r. I can get r from this, like this. I will substitute volume and I will get r. So, r is 6 centimeter. Now, what I will do? I will take 6 and substitute here. I will get dr by dt. That is what I need to find out. It is radius per second. You have to put radius. You have to put centimeter cc per second. Right? It is given in cc. So, unit is cc per second because it is with respect to time. So, it is second. Second one is also similar. Right? Edge of a cube is given. Rate means it is differentiation. So, you assume that edge of cube is x. So, differentiation would be dx by dt with respect to time because minute is given here, right? So, 6 centimeter. dx by dt is 6 centimeter per minute. How fast is the volume? How fast? That means time. Volume. We will consider volume as v. Surface area A. You have to find how fast volume and surface area is increasing when the edge is 10 centimeter. Edge. Edge is x, right? So, x should be 10 centimeter. When x is equal to 10 centimeter, you have to find dv by dt. You have to find dv by dt and dA by dt. Why? Because they are asking you to find out the volume and surface area. At what rate this volume and surface area is increasing. So, you have to find dv by dt and dA by dt. So, you need to know the formula of the cube. What is volume of cube? It is x cube. Right? So, you differentiate. Find the derivative of x cube which is 3x square. And don't forget to put dx by dt. You are differentiating x with respect to t. So, dx by dt. dx by dt is given as given as 6 here. So, substitute. I substitute 6 here. x is 10 centimeter. They have given edge is 10 centimeter. Substitute x here. You will get dv by dt. Similarly, what is dA by dt? Area of cube is 6x square. Formula. Differentiate. You are differentiating x with respect to t. So, dx by dt. dx by dt is given here. 6. You are substituting 6, edge is x, 10, so you get dA by dt here, right? Surface area is always centimeter square, it is square and uh, volume is always cube, remember. Volume is always cube and uh, surface area is always square. And don't forget to put the units, right, per minute, per minute, whatever they have given the question. If they have given second, put second. If they have given minutes, put minutes. If they have given centimeter, put centimeter. Similar problem, circular patch of oil spreads on water, the area growing at the rate of 16 centimeter. Area is growing at the rate. That means you consider area as A. So, dA by dt is this much. How fast are radius? That means dr by dt. Assume r is radius. Circumference, dc. Assume circumference is c, dc by dt. You have to find this. They have given diameter is 12 centimeter. If diameter is 12 centimeter, what is radius? Radius is half of it, right? Radius is half of diameter. That is half of 12, which is 6 centimeter. What is area of circle formula? Pi r square, right? Now, you find the derivative, right? Uh, we don't know what is dr by dt, but we'll have to find this out. Radius we know, half of diameter, 6 centimeter. So, put 6 centimeter. dA by dt is given, 16. So, you'll find dr by dt, right? Next, you have to find circumference. That is dc by dt. Formula for circumference is 2 pi r. 
so 2 pi you differentiate you will get dr by dt you found dr by dt here substitute you will get circumference fourth one a ladder 15 feet long leans against a smooth vertical wall so there is a ladder it is leaning against the wall right and it is 15 feet in length if the top slides downwards that means the ladder is slowly coming down if it's key, if, if it's coming down that means this will go far right it will go away from the wall it will keep on sliding as this ladder keeps sliding down this distance will keep increasing it has to go apart right now you need to find as the ladder is moving downwards how fast is it going apart from the lower end right this is the lower end of the ladder how fast is it moving away from the wall this is the wall now you assume that this height of the wall is y and this dif distance from the lower end of the ladder to the wall as x x and y ladder they've given as 15 feet if you notice this looks like a right angle triangle so whenever there's a right angle triangle you need to use pythagoras theorem what is pythagoras theorem i put in a square is equal to adjacent side square plus opposite square right that is you take both the sides square of this side square of this side is equal to i put in a square this is this is how it is ac square is equal to ab square plus bc square ac square is equal to ab square plus bc square now we assumed uh, ab square is y and bc square is x but they have told you have to find when the lower end is 12 feet away from the wall lower end of the ladder is 12 feet away from the wall that means x is 12 so put x as 12 here that is bc this bc is 12 so put substitute bc here right and uh, ac what is length of ac nothing but ladder length it's 15 feet so this way you will get y value you will get y value which is 9 feet here now what am i supposed to find i am supposed to be finding how fast the lower end is moving when the lower end is 12 feet away from the wall that means i have to find this rate of movement what is this x so i have to find dx with respect to what it's how fast with respect to time so i have to find dx by dt and when x is 12 feet so now i'll differentiate this pythagoras theorem i'll take the same x square plus y square is equal to 15 square nothing but uh, you know a this entire formula ac square is equal to ac square is 15 square ab square ab square is y square bc square is x square so i'll take this equation i'll differentiate right and then uh, I, I have to find dx by dt from this expression dy by dt do i know dy by dt dy by dt is 2 feet per second top sliding downward that means what is this y it's sliding downwards right so it's y so it's dy by dt dy by dt is 2 feet per second right i substitute dy by dt as 2 y i already obtained here 9 and i can find dx and x is 12 feet so i'll get dx by dt next problem displacement is given the equation for displacement is given find the time when acceleration is 14 feet simple what is acceleration if i differentiate displacement twice i'll get acceleration so once i find the derivative then i find the derivative again second time so i'll get 12t minus 10 they have told find the time i have to find t when acceleration is 14 feet that means da by dt is given as 14 so i put 14 here and i'll find t which is 2 seconds second question find the velocity velocity is when i differentiate s once when i differentiate s once i get velocity right so this is actually velocity velocity is ds by dt now i have to find the velocity when t is equal to 2 seconds substitute t i'll get velocity displacement directly take the displacement equation this one and put t is equal to 2 seconds i'll get displacement value don't forget to put the units huh? units whatever is given in the question same units you have to put feet feet second second find the maximum and minimum value of the function this is the function 
Now, if you have to find the maximum and minimum, you will have to find double derivative. Based on the value of the double derivative, right, you will know if it is maximum or minimum. If double derivative is greater than 0, then it is minimum. If it is less than 0, then it is maximum. Right? Again, refer my videos on application of derivatives. Right? It will be difficult to explain entire concept in one video. You will have to go through those different uh, videos based on concepts. Now, here, I will touch upon at a high level. Now, you will have to take the first order derivative. Differentiate this function once. You will get this one. Equate it to 0. Once I equate it to 0, I can find the value of x. See, always we have to find the value of x. Once we find the value of x, then we will have to find the double derivative. Here, you have to find the double derivative, which is 18. 18 is greater than 0. Since it is greater than 0, it is minimum. We call the function is minimum at what point when x is equal to minus 2 by 3. That is what we found out, right? x value we found minus 2 by 3. Right? Now, to find the exact value, you will have to take this x value and put it in the function. So, now you will get the exact value. So, exact value is minimum value is minus 2. Now, you have to show that x to the power x is minimum at x is equal to 1 by e. How do you do that? To show that x bar x is minimum, condition is double derivative should be greater than 0. This is the condition. And then you have to find the value of x to get the actual minimum value. So, we will first find single order derivative. You will get this one, this expression. Now, you equate it to 0. So, once I equate it to 0, I will get the value of x. Now, to find the minimum, uh, now I will have to find the double order derivative, second order derivative. This is a second order derivative, right? Now, in this second order derivative, I will have to substitute the value of x. So, wherever there is x, I substitute it. Here, if you notice, after substituting, I should see if it is greater than 0, less than 0. Here, this is going to be greater than 0. See, you do not have to really calculate but e is always greater than 0. The value of e is always greater than 0. Therefore, the entire expression will be greater than 0. Therefore, you can say it is minimum at this particular point. x is equal to 1 by e. You have to show or prove that this is minimum at this particular point. To prove that, you will have to first take single order derivative, find the value of x, then find the second order derivative, substitute the value of x in the second order derivative, and then see if it is greater than 0 or less than 0. There are detailed steps given in the playlist. You can refer that for solving such kind of problems. Next one, find the maximum and minimum value of this particular expression. Same step, first find the single order derivative, equate it to 0, get the value of x, right? Now take this value of x. Now you find the double order derivative, second order derivative, take this value of x, substitute, see if it is less than 0 or greater than 0. Here it is less than 0, that means it is maximum. Now, you need to find the value. So, again, put this x is equal to 1 in the original function. When you put this value of x in original function, you will get the maximum value. So, you got two x values here. x is equal to 1, x is equal to 5. So, you have to substitute x is equal to 1 and see if it is greater than or less than 0. Then, take the next value of x. Again, check if it is greater than 0 or less than 0. Here, it is greater than 0. So, function is minimum. To get the minimum value, take this x is equal to 5 and put it in the original function, you will get the minimum value. Next problem is to find the uh, output at which MR is equal to MC. This is, you know, cost and revenue based uh, problems. I think this is the simplest of all in the entire uh, application of derivatives, right? This is simplest. Try to, um, you know, focus on these problems. This is relatively simple. So, total revenue function is given, cost function is given, find the output. So, MR is equal to MC. What is MR? Marginal revenue. Marginal revenue means you have to differentiate revenue. Marginal cost means differentiate cost. Differentiate that. You need to find the output when MR is equal to MC. Equate. You have got MR here. You have MC here. Equate. You will get value of X. So, X is 45. This is the output. Output is 45. Output means it is the number of units. Number of units. Here, we saw the question as find the output at which MR is equal to MC. Instead, we could also have a question as, find the equilibrium output. It means the same. Equilibrium output is when MR is equal to MC. The next problem, 
again cost function is given you have to find the number of articles q is number of articles q given here is number of articles you have to find the number of articles produced at minimum cost and you have to find the minimum cost so minimum cost means what you have to differentiate cost so you'll get this expression now you equate this expression to zero when you equate you'll get value of q you'll get value of q once i get the value of q you have to check if it is minimum or not right that means you have to double differentiate now you double differentiate right you'll get this now you put the value of q in this particular expression so you're getting you'll check if it is positive or negative it is positive here since it is positive it means it's minimum right remember the condition if double derivative is greater than zero that means it is minimum so minimum cost now how do i find the actual cost whatever value of q you have obtained put it in the original function original function remember not in the derivative in the original function this is the original function right in this function you put the value of q and you'll get the minimum cost rupees rupees 41 last problem divide the number i think even in the two marker uh, uh, video this was discussed right divide the number 40 into two parts such that their product is maximum again this is the simplest in application of derivatives focus on this problem also relatively this and the earlier problems are simple let the two parts be x and y so when you add the total is 40 and the product is maximum that means when i multiply x and y x into y is maximum let's assume that p is equal to product is equal to x into y and it is maximum maximum means what when double derivative is less than zero this is the condition so once you solve the problem ensure that you verify that it is maximum now first we'll find the single order derivative we'll we'll uh, you know differentiate this what you have to do is first substitute y substitute y what is y 40 minus x right y is 40 minus x so in this product substitute instead of y i put 40 minus x so it will be 40 i'll multiply this so i'll get 40x minus x square now i'll differentiate this right now i equate it to zero this is standard step once i find the derivative equate it to zero the reason you equate it to zero is to get the value of x once i get the value of x i will get this is, x is the first number i will get the value of second number right so it will be 40 minus x first number is 20 obviously second number is 20 so two numbers are 20 and 20 now i have to verify the product is maximum so i'll take the double derivative of this p D double derivative will be minus 2 it's less than 0 negative means product is maximum so it's proven that the product is maximum now let's look at this particular problem a square plate is expanding uniformly the side is increasing at the rate of 5 cm per second what is the rate at which the area is increasing when the side is 20 cm long let's see what is given in the question the side is increasing at the rate of 5 cm per second so let's assume that side as a right small a side is increasing at the rate side is increasing which means dA by dt is 5 cm per second what is the rate at which area is increasing so we'll have to find rate of increase of area so let's assume so let's assume area as capital a right and we have to find rate at which area is increasing that is we have to find dA by dt we have to find dA by dt right now what is the area of square it's a square plate so what is the area of square it is nothing but area is nothing but side square right side into side is area of square we have assumed the side to be a so it's going to be a square we have to find da by dt right so what is da by dt we'll have to take the area formula area is equal to a square right and if you have to find da by dt you have to differentiate this right you have to differentiate this with respect to time dt because time is given in the question per second per second so if you differentiate a square it's going to be 2a and then you have to put da by dt because you're differentiating side that is a with respect to time right so da by dt da by dt is given as 5 centimeter per second so we substitute that so we get 10a and we have to find the rate of increase of area when the side is 20 centimeter long that is when side is 20 centimeter which is nothing but a so instead of a you substitute 20 you will get 200 centimeter square per second since this is area the units is going to be square 
square per second. With this, we have come to the end of this particular video. If you have liked this video, do press a like and share it. Thank you.